Everyone was like, uh-huh, Hassan, you can't put this on a car. Oh, uh, guess what, dude? Yeah, you can. They should have tested it on my take hand, and then I should be able to keep it. I'm saying it. New ver this Veritasium. Metal How NASA reinvented the wheel. Holy f all of this is so good. Is about as close to magic as it is possible to find in nature. I just don't get it. It can adjust its arrangement of atoms to return to some predefined I shape. Pee. But it also and I converts grab between mechanical and thermal energy. I gotta pee, I gotta grab my food, and I'll be back in a 30 second. 30 times more than an ordinary metal and still spring back to its original size. I can feel it in my hands shrinking back. Because of these unique properties, it's being used in everything from medical devices to toys to bulletproof bike tires. And it's allowing NASA to reinvent the wheel for space exploration. This is the bones of the, the bones of the tire. The bones of the tire is a slinky. So basically, this is the, a, a, the slinky applied to the rim. You just wrap the slinky around a rim. Yeah, it doesn't get any simpler than that, right? Here is a, a bicycle that has slinkies inside a polymer. If you look inside there, this tire does not require air pressure to work. The structure and shock absorption are all provided by that metal slinky. So that's like around 100 PSI, or what a normal road bike would feel like. Yeah. Which means you should be able to puncture it with no loss of performance. So we're gonna drive it over a bed of nails. But first, we'll test a traditional pneumatic tire, just to make sure these nails are sharp. That's definitely a nail. Like the nail broke in it? Why does it look That's what like? it looks like. Yeah, the nail's in the tire. We're now gonna try to shoot a bullet into the tire and see what happens. Three, two, one. There, there it is. There it is. Woo, yeah. look at that! Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's just, it's a really clean shot straight through. Yep. Barely even see the mark on the tire. Looks like this one actually hit the hit the uh, alloy. Yep, it does to me. Yeah, that's what it feels like. You can see we spliced off some of the bullet before we even got to the cardboard. How's it ride? Yeah, no problems. Bulletproof bicycle. This bulletproof bike tire actually comes out of NASA's research into making wheels for space missions. It is really hard to make good wheels for other planets. I mean, a lot of the places we want to send rovers to, there is no or very low atmospheric pressure. We can't use rubber pneumatic tires because of the extreme conditions on the moon and Mars. There's no confining pressure outside of it. It could basically explode. Besides, with temperatures dropping to extreme lows, rubber becomes brittle. If this were a, a flagpole, the temperature facing the sun would be 250 degrees Fahrenheit above zero in the shadow is 250 degrees below zero. Let's uh, put some rubber on the moon. Negative 90 is the glass transition temperature. It's when the polymer goes from being flexible to a rigid element. This is what happens when you dip rubber in liquid nitrogen. Oh. Kai is gone. But you can't send rubber to the moon. She's roaming the streets. This is why almost all the wheels used for exploring other planets have been made of hard metal. This is actually a spare for the Curiosity rover. It's made out of aluminum, a single billet that gets machined down so you don't have to worry about fasteners or welds or anything like that that could potentially be a, a failure point. But with it being so expensive to launch matter into space, the wheels have to be as lightweight as possible. It's, it's light it. Ha ha ha, the wheels on the bus go round and round. Ha 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 ha. But it's still heavy. To meet those mass limitations, they made this skin 0.7 millimeters thick. Thinner than a credit card. Yep. These structural members here. You good, bro? Okay, dude. Okay. Y'all are just like fake ass fucking. You are fake ass politics fans, dude. You're literally fucking fake ass <laughs> politics. Fans. You're fucking fake, all of you. You're all fake. You don't even love Kamala Harris like I do. You don't even have like, you can't even name one of her albums, let alone three. Tell me three times Kamala Harris is engaged in mass incarceration. 
Okay? You can't. You can't. You're fucking fake. You're a phony. You're a phony. Okay? You couldn't even immediately figure out that, that Kamala Harris gaffe. Okay? You're phony. You're fake. Exactly. Can't. Tell me, tell me five of Joe Biden's favorite racism moments. You can't. Here, which we also call grousers. I was going to show this to my professor for your political analysis on government funded science pursuits and all I've got is wheels on the bus go round and round. Ha ha. Well, that's your mistake. Never show me to your professors. Because then they start using me in their classrooms, which is weird. You tried quoting this man. Drake was seen rocking a hard feelings, harder dick hoodie last night in Miami. Oh, God damn it. He's so wack. They're there to give the wheel strength, but also this is why I didn't fucking post Drake and, lyrics. And help grab the soil. The problem is that because this rubber is so large and heavy and the train is just so aggressive and nasty, they're actually seeing much higher peak loads kind of focused on areas between these grousers than what was predicted. And this is the actual condition of the wheels on Mars right now. And as you can see, got big holes and cracks where those skin, where that skin was. Now the wheel still operates, hasn't immobilized the rover. It's still gonna complete its mission, but it does affect where it can go and how, how efficient it is. When you apply a force to a material, that is known as a stress. And what you're really doing is tugging on all the atoms inside the object. And as a result, their spacing changes a little bit, and so the material deforms. For example, if you pull on an object, it will get slightly longer. And the per unit change in length is called strain. Now, for most materials under low stresses, strain is directly proportional to the stress applied. I mean, the more you stress it, the more it stretches. And the material is elastic. If you remove the stress, the object goes back to its original size. So no atoms have moved around and no bonds have been broken or formed. You've just made them flex when you applied that stress. But if the stress applied exceeds the yield strength of the material, well then the strain is so great that the atoms can't maintain their positions relative to each other. Defects called edge dislocations can move through the material. The atoms are actually rearranging themselves, and so the deformation is not reversible. It's plastic deformation. So the object won't go back to its original shape when the stress is removed. If enough stress is applied, the material can completely fracture. In the worst case scenario, this results in holes like in the Mars rover wheels, which reduce their performance and ultimately could jeopardize the mission. Ordinary metals can withstand a strain of only around 0.3 to 0.8% elastically. Any more than that, and they undergo plastic deformation, so they won't return to their original shape. Ultimately, they could even fracture. Thank you guys. All right? Yeah, and you kinked it too. Kinked it <laughs> and stretched it. And that's why every component of a space vehicle is designed never to stretch more than that 0 0.3 to 0.8%, but that's a significant limitation. There is a different type of wheel that NASA has tried in space, which are those on the Apollo Lunar Roving Vehicle, or LRV. Fake. That particular structure that they built real. is something that Fake. we call a panograph. All it is is it's a set of wires that have been over, under, over, under woven. And this, really this on the surface here to get grip, also to strengthen? It's primarily to ensure that the tire does not sink into the ground. So they did some studies with these tread strips to figure out how much coverage they needed. And so they, they found out that roughly 50% was enough to keep the tire kind of floating on the surface and still uh, maintain that flexibility. The lunar roving vehicle wheels worked well for the short distance journeys traveled on the moon. I mean, the farthest this vehicle ever went was 36 kilometers. But still, these wheels needed to be designed to minimize plastic deformation of the steel mesh. And so they put uh. this internal structure inside there. We call it a bump stop. So as they hit a bump, and this is deformed, when it hits that, it stops the deformation to keep it just below that proportional limit where they would induce plasticity. This wheel was good enough for the short Apollo missions, but for longer journeys, a bump stop won't be enough to prevent plastic deformation building up. I only care about bump stops, brother. Tell me when the NASA Scientists invent that. Up over time. Mesh steel wheels have been tried on Earth, but their performance does degrade over time. This was the Mars steel spring tire we, we made and drove on that same test rig, and there's no fracture, but you see a lot of permanent deformation there. 
What we need is a material that is strong and durable like steel, but which can endure much more strain. Look at this, bro. Do you regret any allegations against XQCKs? Like, brother, you watched a fucking clip chimp. You got mad at XQC's wrong interpretation of a clip chimp. You came in here and wanted to continue sparking drama. Your life is so pathetic, brother. Please don't, don't kiss yourself, please. Like, you have to understand, you are such a gigantic fucking loser, man. I cannot, under like, he, he followed. There's a 10-minute follow marker. He waited for that to go on, sat for 15 more minutes and was like, now is the time. He cracked his fucking knuckles and was like, I'm going in. It's so pathetic, brother. Like, even if there was, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Even if there was, like, some serious shit, you know what I mean? Even if there was, even if I literally was, like, XQC's abusive or whatever, whatever he fucking thought I was saying, which I didn't, even then coming in here and being, like, dog, I got you on this. Like, how do you fucking feel about that? Like, this is what you want to, do you, this is what you want to fucking dedicate your life to, really? Like, really? It's so crazy. I want to unbet. I want to unban this guy just to hear what his, like, brain and see hear how his brain works. Now he's getting what he wants. No, it's just, like, such a fucking loser. Like, he's, like, a different kind of being. Like, at this point, this is a person who has, like, lost his humanity. You know what I mean? Almost entirely. Completely given up on trying to be a fucking normal human. And is, and is like, gone down the fucking deep end. Like, this is Twitch streamer drama that's going to go away in, like, the next fucking three hours. You're hollowed out, brother. You're trying to fucking extend it. Do something valuable with your fucking life. Holy shit, you are such a pathetic loser. Some, some of these motherfuckers on this platform are so fucking pathetic, dude. Jesus Christ. Without deforming permanently. And so why did Night and All change shape? Well, it's really because the alloy can undergo a phase change in the solid state. It phases in up. In heated night and all, the atoms are arranged in a cubic lattice arrangement. And this phase is known as austenite. But upon cool the material- I unban that fucking freakazoid, but I will ban you if you like immediately, for no reason, rush to defend a person who is literally a hollowed out shell. Okay? I don't give a fuck how many fucking uh, weeks you've been in here. How many months you fucking giving me money? I don't care. It just immediately demonstrates that your brain is so broken that you will, you will literally go and defend a loser on a fucking sock account who's trying to make drama. You're so fucking stupid. You're stupider than that guy. That guy's pathetic. He has no fucking friends. He has no prospects. He he's not hitting the fucking gym. Way too valuable to waste it on Tay Cussy. That's what you think. You really see it contracting there. 13, 15, 16, 17, 20 pounds. Oh, it's lifting it. That's about 90 newtons of force. Scientists have even used shape memory alloys to fracture a rock. Shape memory alloys are being investigated for use in aviation. I made a video before about vortex generators, which are these little fins that stick up out of the wing of a plane to trip the airflow into turbulence. This is important for takeoff and landing to keep the flow attached to the wing so you don't stall. But when you're up at cruise and you don't need, need those vortices being generated, you want these to stow because they're a drag penalty. As the plane just climbs from takeoff to cruise, we go from some temperature on the ground to something close to minus 50, minus 60 C at cruise. The alloy is designed in between those so that we can just take advantage of the ambient temperature change that happens in the environment. When we cool this one down, That's no so controller, sick. no operator, it autonomously stays flat. The temperature at which the material transitions between austenite and martensite can be tuned to be anywhere between minus 150 to positive 350 degrees Celsius. 
This is done by changing the ratio of the elements and using different heat treatments. And then as that would heat back up, coming into landing. How doesn't it wear? Like, why doesn't it wear and tear after, like, that heat treatment, cold treatment? Like, how many times can you fucking do that without the metal, like, actually losing its metal? Not past the fracture point? Really? The bonds between atoms aren't breaking? But it doesn't matter. There's no way that it doesn't fucking... That's the entire point of the metal, bro. He just explained it. No, the entire point of the metal is that it can do this, but over like an entire lifetime, there's no way that that kind of movement doesn't inevitably fucking break it a little bit. Because there's no plastic deformations. Where is from plastic deformations? As long as you don't get past the fracture point, you're good. What the fuck? There's no, like it doesn't degrade at all. Comes right back up. It literally breaks my brain. I feel like it's supposed to, right? Like it's supposed to. That doesn't make any sense. That it. I'm not talking. I'm. I'm talking about like yeah. It can be like very durable, but like it. <clears throat> have you been watching the video? I have, but I'm stupid, so I don't really understand it. This principle has been extended to operate the main flaps on an aircraft. It doesn't now, make sense in my brain. Now the heating and cooling is not passive, but controlled by a heating element. So we've done demonstrations where you have a 737 aircraft and no hydraulic actuators on the wing box. All we have is a shuttle mechanism that's driven by two tubes and nitinol. And we've driven those ailerons and flap elements on the wing box of a 737 in flight, 60 degrees flap angle down, 30 degrees flap angle up, just by heating and cooling two tubes and nitinol. Replaces all the hydraulics. The shape memory effect is the main thing people know about materials like nitinol but they have another unique property which makes them ideal for making durable wheels. And you're just gonna take it and you're gonna loop it a couple times around your hand like that and you're just gonna pull on that wire and feel six to eight percent strain in a piece of metal. Oh, that's really weird. That's six to eight percent strain which you can't do in other wires, right? But what's weird about it is that it feels a little crunchy. It, it, it feels, because you're feeling all of the reorientations. Oh, so weird. So cool though, right? Yes, very cool. Can you hear that? Yeah. How so that, weird that is that? That pinging is twinning. Shape memory alloys can stretch up to 8% of their length and still spring back to their original size. This property is known as super elasticity or pseudo elasticity, but they're kind of misnomers because the material is not actually operating in its elastic regime. What's actually happening is that this nitinol is in the austenite phase. Its transition temperature is lower than room temperature. But by applying a stress, even with no temperature change, you can force the crystal structure to change from austenite into detwinned martensite. Don't this rearrangement looking. allows the nitinol to deform by that 8%, and still it'll snap back. It just has a gum gum fruit, dude. I get it now. That's fine. Uh, that's it. You know how like you can make a sword eat like a fruit in the One Piece universe? Like the elephant elephant fruit or whatever? It's the same principle. They took they took a fucking metal string and they made it made it eat the gum 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 fruit. To its original configuration once the stress is removed and the atoms return to the austenite phase. That sound you're hearing is the material undergoing a stress-induced phase change in the solid state. If you want to think about it on a stress strain curve, now this transformation is occurring entirely above the martensite transition temperature. So the material starts off in the austenite phase, and then the applied stress is what induces the phase change from austenite to detwinned martensite. And when that stress is removed, the atoms spring back to the austenite phase, and so the material goes back to its original size and shape. If this were a normal tube, I would bend it to here and it would plasticize. If it was a brass tube, which you know has a plastic buckling mode, it would go like this and it would actually buckle the wall. I would never take my hands and bend them like this and have it completely return to shape. At the bend, the nitinol is transforming from austenite to martensite and back. 
When we go from the higher symmetry phase, the austenite, to the lower symmetry daughter phase, which one is it? Exothermic or endothermic? I feel like that should be exothermic. Good job, science guy. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to put your hand around this tube, you'll actually feel the heat energy, the enthalpy of that transformation evolving as heat. You ready? Yep. Oh yeah, that's real hot. Oh, oh, oh. That, that actually is like burning. Like I can't keep my hand no, on keep it. Your hand Oynasın, oynasın, bir şey olmaz. What does she have in her mouth? <laughs> she, your slipper? <laughs> she just ran away with it. <laughs> what the hell? It goes through plastic deformation and back to normal again without any displacement. This is sorcery. Please don't watch it. It's haram. It's not. Dude, the same thing literally happens at the top of the hour when you buy a $5 a month subscription. You don't see the fucking ads. You know what I mean? There's nowhere. There's no displacement. You have an uninterrupted. It's like a scientific method for having an uninterrupted broadcast experience. It's just science. Like people, people who are giving me low scores don't understand the science behind it. Okay. It's in a similar principle. This is how it works. There's no displacement of the stream. Here's the three minute ad break now. Speed Razor, thank you for allowing five people to have no displacement from the stream. At the top of the hour, here's a three minute ad break now. Speed Razor gifted five, get the subs. Put your hand on it. It Jeez, won't burn that's you. Hot. When the stress is removed and the material goes back to being austenite, that phase change is endothermic. It absorbs heat. <laughs> right? It's like you could use that for a refrigerator. So the, it's exactly right. So another area where these materials are being applied is in a field called elastocalorics, where we use this transformation to do things like equivalent pumping. to heat pumping. I want to shoot this with our thermal camera. We got a FLIR with us. How's that? This dissipation potential can act a little bit like the dissipation in the shock absorber, right? So the tire itself could actually perform some of that dissipation potential on its own. It almost acts as a damper right? to get rid of that energy loss. So then your, your tire actually has a potential of becoming a complete suspension system, hmm. which obviously really simplifies building vehicles for, for space. The original tire, when I put load on it, okay, you can see I'm only transferring a load from the footprint to this little section of the tire, mm -hmm. all right? By tying these, this bump stop element to here, when I go through a footprint, you can see now I'm transferring load 360 degrees around the tire, right? By doing that, I have now increased my load carrying capacity significantly without adding any more mass. So to make a tire out of shape memory alloy, they weave nitinol springs together into a mesh. It's a pretty tedious and time consuming process. So you're gonna take it like so. Yep. You're gonna grab oh. both ends. No. And now take no, it. No, you're I'll not. Take it yep. and screw it in. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Is this what you do every day? 684 times. 684 times <laughs> per, per tire. tire. But will these wheels work on rovers on the moon and Mars? Well, they test the wheels extensively on a rotating carousel of different terrain types, from sand to small rocks to bigger rocks. So the terrain endurance rig basically consists of a circular carousel that is independently driven. The wheel tire assembly is also independently driven so we can create a force slip condition so we can drive with zero slip. And this is about how slow a Mars rover would be traveling. Average speed. Yeah, I can fucking take it, dude. No, L. That's how fast it goes? <laughs> shit, that sucks, dude. I could outrun that shit. Any alien. Any alien outruns that shit in a heartbeat. You know what I mean? Nobody nobody sees it. It is about 6.7 centimeters per second. That's a nominal speed. They don't go too fast. 
All right, I'm gonna go walk on simulated moon regolith. It looks like beach and it feels like beach. This side is meant to simulate the surface of the moon and this side is meant to be the surface of Mars. It is uh, very sinky sand. The wheel is rolling along, rolling along, hits a rock. And I'm just, am I pushing into it or do I want to get it on top? I'd say get on top and just put all your body weight onto it. That's basically my full weight on it. The sheet memory alloy is strong enough to support the weight of a vehicle or vehicle. Bro, I'm not kidding. That's literally the same size of the, the extra part of the pothole that was on the fucking road off of the exit ramp on um, I-10 getting into La Cienega, the La Cienega exit. I'm not even joking. It's literally showing me. It's just straight up showing me that a better future is possible. Thank you to the government funding. Thank, <laughs> thank you to NASA. The only way to fucking dodge LA potholes is by buying titanium alloy, whatever the fuck it's called. Nightminium? Is that what it was? I already forgot the name of it, too. Oh. Night and all. Or they could just repair the roads. No, they can't do that. No. They can't. The The Los Angeles Police Department needs more money. They, the LAPD needs more money. We can't fix the roads. Uh, repairing the roads? What is this, communist Russia? What is this, communist China? What is this, communist DPRK? No. And just put all your body weight onto it. That's basically my full weight on it. The sheet memory alloy is strong enough to support the weight of a vehicle or vehicle and crew. Also, the irony is like a tire wouldn't pop if you did that. You have to hit it at speed. I mean, I know this is to show like it's uh, how elastic it is and, and, and like the, the built in suspension mechanism within the within the tire because of the uh, because of what they're using. But like if you put a tire on top of it and then laid on it, it wouldn't blow up either. Who needs spike strips when you got LA roads? Yeah. But it's also incredibly flexible, so it can deform up to 8% without being permanently damaged. And that's what's needed for long space missions. So that's a pretty good amount of deformation, right? That's a great amount of deformation. And still not beyond 8%. It's so gooey. It's just walking back to the car after the beach. Tricky for a rover, right? But these tires won't just be for space. They're also looking at terrestrial applications. Most aircraft, the tires on those aircraft, they have to be pressurized to really, really high pressurizations, 300, 400 PSI, not the conventional 30 to 60 PSI <laughs> yeah, what a the car fuck? truck tire, right? We have issues where at those huge pressurizations, they can explode. The other construct is, is maintenance, right? So if I'm a pneumatic tire and I'm relying on that pneumatics for the performance of the system, I have to always be checking the air pressure to make sure that I'm at the right inflation pressure so that I'm not burning too much fuel or I'm not at a place where I could potentially pop a tire because of the loads. By going to a structural system that doesn't rely- There's no way you find this too find yourself to be too dumb to understand this like i'm a dumb guy i'm the resident dumb guy here and even i get it it's pretty simple stuff they have basically been able to find like a new here i'll i'll make it as accessible as possible big smart man uh at nasa find new metal that when contacting heat or extremely cold temperatures uh is able to change shape but come back to same shape after, okay? It, it, it's able to come back to same shape after without any sort of deterioration or degradation. Like a rubber band. 
space cold, metal handle cold good. Space warm, metal handle warm good too sometimes. That way, you avoid LA pothole by using metal tire. Metal tire has built-in suspension in it too. Lion Air and is designed specifically for the application, all of those things go away. They've tested one on a Jeep. Since it doesn't rely on pressurized air for support, you just can't get a flat tire. That's it. Plus it oh, everyone can suck my dick, by the way. Everyone was like, uh-huh, Hassan, you can't put this on a car. Oh, uh, guess what, dude? Yeah, you can. They should have tested it on my take hand, and then I should be able to keep it, okay? It can never be underinflated, which significantly improves fuel economy. With a metal that works like magic, you can make airless tires that will take us off-road, on-road, into the air, and across other worlds. NASA's Night and All tires are designed to last the entire lifetime of a rover mission, even on the rough terrain of Mars. But here on Earth, few products last a lifetime. From bike tires to phones to toothbrushes, pretty much everything wears out. But with Henson shaving, the sp It's called uh, manufactured obsolescence, planned obsolescence. I think the issue is metal tires would murder the roads even more. Yeah, it's called libertarianism, sweaty. Libertarians absolutely fucking hate roads. So this way they'd be able to destroy the roads even further. Hey, 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 no. She's eating the, mom, she's eating the bed. I don't know, give her a toy. Mom was like adamant about getting her a bed. And I was like, mom, if you get her a bed, she's going to pee and poop on it because she thinks it's a pee pad. These tires inside of a rubber casing would be dope for car chases, Lamal. Let her eat the bed. You can buy another one. You stingy socials. Okay, here.